when you look at peak oil and you, you, you put it at 2030, could it come sooner than 2030 or could it actually be postponed if the, the world changes in terms of growth? Thank you very much. Of course, it can go uh, either way. What we think is with the current uh, government policies, technology and the plans, the passenger oil uh, demand uh, will uh, peak in the next 10 years or so, and the total global oil uh, demand will plateau around 2030s and stay uh, more or less uh, stable. But it can go uh, either way. If the governments take much stronger, clean, efficient technologies, push them much stronger, we may well see that the peak can happen earlier. But at the same time, if the policies of the governments uh, do go in the other direction, we may see peak comes later. I will give you one example. When you look at the newspapers today or televisions, when we talk about the car uh, uh, manufacturing sector, the star is electric cars, you may think. But it's not the case. Our numbers show that the star of the manufacturing sector, uh, car manufacturing sector, is the SUVs. In the year uh, 2000, only 18 percent of the total cars sales, sold in the world was SUVs. And last year, this 18 percent came to 42 percent. 42 percent of all the cars sold in the world were SUVs. As we all know, for SUVs, you need, you need much more oil. If these things trends continue, we may see a different oil uh, demand uh, trajectory. And the SUV sales are not only in the United States, as you may think, but also in Europe, China, India, and even in uh, other parts of the uh, world. So lots of uncertainties, but our base case assumption is plateauing around 2030s global oil demand uh, growth. Yeah, I was going to ask you exactly that. Does it all depend on energy policy in the U.S.? And that will be dictated on who wins in 2020. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. It depends on the United States, but also in China and other countries. Government policies are uh, definitely uh, critical uh, here. And we have seen many government policies had a lot of impact on the consumption of energy, but also on the production of energy. If we talk about today the major impact of shale revolution, it is basically a government policy of the United States uh, by uh, pushing the research and development providing tax credits and providing right market design. And, and we now see that the, uh, the global shale oil uh, production is huge, bulk of it coming from the United States. And our numbers show that in the next 10 years, about 85 percent of the global oil production growth will come from the United States only. And this mm -hmm. would have major implication for OPEC plus Russia, uh, mm -hmm. just a uh, mid 2000s, uh, the, uh, the share of OPEC plus Russia in the global oil production was about 55 percent. And this will come down uh, around 2030, about uh, uh, 45 percent or so. Big decline, which will limit the ability of those countries to manage the oil markets right. and give a shape to the uh, global oil prices. Uh, Mr. Birol, it looks like OPEC Plus isn't really interested in cutting production deeper next year. What will that mean for the market? Is there a danger that we'll see another glut? I think uh, 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 three factors here. Uh, one is the on the uh, production side. Again, significant amount of oil will come from the United States, but also from Norway, from uh, Canada, from Brazil, from Guyana significant amount of his oil coming. Second, global economy is not doing very well. Therefore, demand will be uh, rather uh, uh, weak. And on top of that, uh, it is important what the OPEC plus Russia uh, will do. And uh, in that context, I don't expect any price spike uh, uh, risk for the uh, consumers. And uh, uh, when we look at the this year, Prices remain around $60, despite the uh, OPEC and the other 
uh, uh, countries wanted to push the price up, and we have seen unprecedented level of the geopolitical developments.